Out of all the effects in After Effects, there are some pretty crazy ones and some that just seem plain useless. But it isn't until you scroll to the obsolete category that you can really appreciate how far this application has come. These effects are literally only here for compatibility with older projects that might actually still use them. Some of their uses have been completely replaced by actual features and After Effects, and other ones have just been upgraded to better versions. And I am going to be a completionist about this series, so I'm going to show you each one of these effects. And you might want to just skip past this one, but hey, we're still going to have some fun, so stick around. Let's just go through all of these one by one. First of all, we have basic 3D. If I drag this out onto a layer, then it's going to give me some 3D controls for swivel, tilt, distance to the image, which I somehow always get an error on. I have to click a million times to get out of. I always feel like I'm going to crash my computer. And then two checkboxes, show specular highlight, which gives it a little bit of that nice little shimmer, and draft preview wireframe, which doesn't even seem to work anymore. Now, obviously, all of these controls have been replaced with actual 3D controls and After Effects, so you can forget about that one. Next up is basic text. For this one, I'm going to make a solid layer and just apply basic text. It's going to give me this little window where I can choose my font, direction, alignment, and type some text. Click OK, and there is some basic text. I can increase the size, change the color, and all other controls. Again, this one is made completely obsolete with the actual text tool. Can you imagine using After Effects before there was actual text layers? We've come a long way. I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to jump down the list to path text. This is almost the same, except that it's going to give us these vector bezier handles that allow us to put this text on a path. All of the other controls make sense, but this is again something that you can do with text layers and mask paths, so there's no reason for you to ever do this with an effect. You get rid of that. Next, why don't we look at a fun one, lightning. If you're not familiar, there's now an advanced lightning effect under the generate category that has replaced this, and it basically just gives you a lot more controls and lets you do much more complicated things. So there's really no benefit to knowing this effect. So I'm not going to walk through all of these different controls. As you can see, there are a lot of them, but it's basically the beam effect with some turbulent controls and lots of parameters to help shape this beam. But like I said, advanced lightning replaces this one. So just don't even bother. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that solid and apply Gaussian Blur Legacy. This is just an older version of Gaussian Blur, which as you can see, does not have a repeat edges checkbox, unlike the current Gaussian Blur. If I bring that out, we have repeat edge pixels. So what this is going to make a difference with is if I make an adjustment layer and apply those two effects, I'll blur this out and you see that the edges are getting dark. But if I turn off the legacy version and turn on the new version with repeat edge pixels checked, that doesn't happen. On top of that, this effect is now GPU accelerated, so there really is no reason for you to be using Gaussian Blur Legacy anymore. I'll get rid of those two effects. Next, let's look at Reduce Interlaced Flicker. If I apply that to this adjustment layer, it has one slider, softness. If I increase it and zoom in, you can see that this is applying a vertical blur. Now, if you're not familiar with interlaced footage, it's an old video format for broadcast on old types of television screens that we don't use anymore. It's completely obsolete. And if you are, for some reason, still working with interlaced footage and you're creating graphics that maybe flicker, Try applying this effect and turning up the softness a little bit to see if it works. I've never been in a scenario where I needed to try that, but that is exactly what this effect is for. All right, we have a couple left. And for these, I'm going to jump over to this fun comp of Shia LaBeouf, getting his anger out, maybe doing a little bit of a workout. And we're going to start with color key. So I'm going to drag that out onto this footage. And this is a very, very basic color keying effect. I'm going to just use the key color to choose that background color increase the color tolerance until most of that green is gone. We're getting some holes in Shia, so I'm actually gonna jump into the matte category, bring out Simple Choker and bring that back in, then duplicate that color key one more time and move it past it, reset it and grab the green color right outside Shia, turn that tolerance up again, soften that out just ever so slightly, turn up the edge thin, maybe just one, and now it looks like Shy is actually just in a colorful scene, maybe doing a little bit of dancing. Uh, from here, why don't I just add in a curves effect, brighten them up a little bit, grab a color link effect, 
drag that out next and set the source layer to that background video, leaving the sample at average, stenciling the original alpha and changing the blend mode to add. And then I'll dial back that opacity a little bit, but now he matches the scene just slightly better. And then why don't I make an adjustment layer? And we'll add a glow effect on top of all of that. Really increase the radius, maybe turn that threshold down a little bit. And now, yeah, Shy is just having a good time. He's having a little party. Nothing to be angry about here. Okay, let's back it up a bit. I'll get rid of these effects. And the next one in the obsolete list is Luma Key. And what this effect does is keys out part of the image based on the brightness. So if I turn the threshold up, it's going to key out darker by default, and that's gonna take away those darker pixels. I can increase or decrease the tolerance, use this edge thin property to shrink or grow that alpha mat, and then feather it out a little bit as well. I could also change this to key out brighter, and then I could potentially get rid of more of the green screen that way, but this would be more for a sky replacement probably. I could key out similar, and I could also key out dissimilar. I'm not even gonna spend the time going through what those all mean because there's a much better effect under the keying category called extract, which allows you to very intuitively set what part of the image you're trying to key out. So if I wanna get this range of colors and smooth it out a little bit, that's how easy that is, or maybe I wanna key out the black. I'm gonna bring that in past these levels right here, maybe smooth it out a little bit, and I'm left with everything but that dark, but I could invert it to just have a dancing hair and clothes version of Shia. And the last effect in the obsolete category is spill suppressor, and this also works with keyed out footage. So I'll take off extract, put my color key back on, and just key out this green one more time quickly. And just so it doesn't look so bad, let's grab that simple choker and bring that back out again duplicate that color key, put it after, and turn down that tolerance a little bit and smooth it out ever so slightly. So what this effect is going to do is find areas of spill, which is light from the green or blue screen reflecting on the subject. So right here you can see there's a lot of green spill, even though I'm getting a fairly decent edge. I mean, obviously not right here with the motion blur, but I'm getting a pretty clean edge on the backside of Shia there's still a lot of green spill, which doesn't look all that great. And Spill Suppressor is designed to remove that. If you apply it, you just need to choose the same color as your screen, and it's going to attempt to suppress or remove that color. And it does a really decent job. You can turn that suppression up or down, even going beyond the default of 100. But the reason this is obsolete is because there is now an advanced spill suppressor, which automatically detects the color that it's trying to suppress, but also gives you lots more controls using the ultra spill suppressor, which is why spill suppressor is now obsolete. But just like that, we've walked through all of the obsolete effects. Again, you don't really need to know about any of them, but this series must be complete. So there you have it. That's everything you wish you didn't know about obsolete effects. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.